What's going on, everybody? It's Stas here. So the stock market had a fantastic day today. S&P 500 up 54 points, up over 1.5%. Dow Jones up 450 points, up 1.6%. And the Nasdaq went up a buck 30, up over 1% on the day. And in this video, we're going to be talking more about the stock market, breaking down some technicals, going over the top stocks that I'm looking to buy here in the month of September in 2019. 2020. And I also want to share with you guys what I've been doing. And let me tell you today, I made some moves that I want to make you aware of. And in general, we're going to talk about what my thoughts are on the stock market right now, as we are getting a bit overheated across the board. So if you guys find value, hit that like button for me, consider subscribing to the channel, check out all the free links. If you want to join our discord, our Facebook link down below in the description box, and you can also get one free stock from we valued up to $1,600 if you guys deposit $100 into the account using my link down below in the description box. So let's get into it, guys. The market just closed about 10 minutes ago, and it was a very strong day. I think it was the best day that we've had here in recent memory. I mean, S&P up 1.5%, Dow up over 1.5%, and the Russell was pretty much up 1% as well. So a very strong day across the board. And it seems like we're getting more and more overbought. It seems like as the market gets to that quote unquote peak where it should go lower, it just continues to go higher, right? All time high today, S&P 3588.11. That brought the RSI pretty much off the page. We might as well start putting this RSI into the, the regular charting here because that's where it's headed. It's at about 91, 92, practically off the RSI page. And at this point, guys, I'm not turning extremely bearish, but I think it's healthy for the markets in general to see some sort of of pull down to see something. I mean, 1%, 2%, 3%, right? These past couple of days, they've they've just been going up and up and up and up with no pull downs whatsoever. So I think a pull down on the S&P from let's say $3600 maybe down to about the mid 3400s. I think that'd be very healthy, but then again, I mean the environment we're in right now, it could continue pushing stocks up higher, which honestly puts everybody in, in a funky situation, which is why I have stocks open. I have open positions, right? I'm playing offense, but at the same time, I'm playing defense. And we'll get into that here in a little bit more in depth. And that's kind of how I'm thinking, right? The markets need a pull down. We're getting a bit overheated, frothy, whatever you guys want to call it. And that's not on the S&P only. That's actually on the NASDAQ as well. NASDAQ, if you guys can see it, the RSI is pretty much off the page if it wants to pop up here. Here we go. RSI off the page right around 91. We haven't seen a significant pull down ever since the beginning of August. So it's been about a month now from in August. We pulled down from 11.2 down to about 10,800. And then again, that wasn't even that significant in itself. But we've just been all up and away for the past couple of weeks. And we hit an all-time high, 12,400 and 39.48 points here on the NASDAQ. It happened, I believe, in power hour we hit that all-time high. Yeah, literally right before the market closed, five minutes before the all-time high was hit. And when it comes down to the Dow, we aren't as overbought comparing to the uh, S&P and the NASDAQ, but still, we're overbought. We're over an ADR psi. We're getting close to the all-time high here at about 29500 That is good for the bulls, right? This massive push to the upside, this push towards that resistance. Kudos to the bulls out there, but we're getting overbought. And again, it's not as overbought as the NASDAQ and the S&P, but I think a healthy pull down would be good. And, and you guys, don't freak out when something pulls down. I mean, I'm talking more to the beginners out there because you guys that are advanced, intermediate, you know that. But when a pull down occurs, it opens up opportunities, right? So don't be scared if we do see a pull down because I know a lot of people think stocks only go up, stonks go up. You guys know that meme, right? But the truth is, they go down too. They go down too. And 
I'm ready for some uh, for some selling. But we'll see what happens again in this environment with all the money printing, people flooding into assets at zero, because we have 0% interest rates. Who knows what's going to happen, right? And uh, yeah, overall, markets are getting frothy. S&P, NASDAQ, all-time highs. Dow Jones is pushing for that all-time high. I would not be surprised if we hit it this week before Labor Day weekend. We'll see what happens. But I'd love to know what you guys have to think about everything going on here down below. And another interesting thing here, I was reading an article on Wall Street Journal today. The U.S. government debt will exceed the size of the economy in the government's 2021 fiscal year, a milestone not hit since World War II. And this goes to show, again, the amount of stimulus going into this economy. It's unprecedented. We're living in historic times, guys. The Congressional Budget Office said Wednesday that federal debt held by the public is projected to reach or exceed 100% of the U.S. gross domestic product, the broadest measure of the U.S. economic output output in the fiscal year that begins on October 1st. That begins on October 1st, guys. That would put the U.S. in the company of a handful of nations with debt loads that exceed their economies, including Japan, Italy, and where I'm personally from, Greece. You know, Greece has been a, uh, it's a, it's a mess. Let's just put it that way. So the U.S. Is, is doing so much money printing, it's insane. So we have the markets going up. The economy is the complete opposite. Wall Street is crushing it. Main Street is not crushing it. So we're just, it's just uh, such unprecedented times right now where you guys have to be careful and calculated with every single decision, right? And on top of that, right, 100%. U.S. GDP, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're set to exceed that, which is unbelievable. On top of that, historically speaking, the markets, the stock market, that is, had a fantastic August. The S&P 500 climbed to its best August return since 1986. The Dow had its best return in August since 1984. And the Nasdaq recorded its strongest August since 2000. In 2000, that was the tech bubble, guys. Not saying we're in a tech bubble now. I'm not saying that, but that's pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, markets are crushing it. Stimulus is pushing the markets higher, while Main Street, unfortunately, is lagging. That's why we're seeing the Russell 2000. It's, it's a better depiction. Somebody commented this on my video yesterday, and I was like, duh, right? This is a better depiction of the U.S. economy, right? The Russell, the small businesses, the small businesses out there make up the heart and soul of the U.S. So watch out for the Russell again for maybe a bounce back play in the next couple of months. If the economy gets back and, and slowly gets back to where it was, that's a big if. We have a lot of hills to climb, but we'll see what happens. And also keep an eye out on precious metals. I mean, silver got crushed today down three and a half percent. Gold, I'm not too sure what gold did. Um, it's actually out of my watch list here for some reason. Let me add it back. Gold actually went down about 30 points. So if you're scared of inflation, I think it's a good idea, but I'm not a financial advisor as always, guys. Remember that. But I think it's a good idea, and I do this myself, to put money at least a little bit into precious metals. So let me know down below in the comments any thoughts, your thoughts around how the stock market performed in August, this economic news about the the, the, G, the debt exceeding the GDP, which is unbelievable, putting us in, uh, in, in circles with Japan, Italy, and Greece, which we all know those those countries. I love them to death. I'm Greek, guys. I love them to death. Italy's great. Japan's great. But their economies are just, oh, man, they're, they're, they're very poor. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. And let's get into now what I personally did in the stock market today. And let me tell you, I made some moves. I made some moves, workhorse in particular. You guys remember yesterday, and I'm thanking myself from yesterday, guys. Thank you, Stas, from yesterday for locking in those profits because uh, workhorse went down about 6% and it was down even more earlier in the day. If you guys take a look here on the one day, one minute, we were down all the way to about 1785. So I actually sold yesterday. If you guys remember in my update video yesterday at about 1970, right before the market closed, I locked in, I believe it was around, I think like a 20% gain or something. So very strong gain there. And I was kind of double guessing or, or second guessing myself like, crap, Stas, should you, should you have just waited till tomorrow? And uh, when I get like that, typically 
the profit taking was a good idea. And, and, and I typically thank myself because the stock sometimes sells off. And then I'm like, ah, yes, thank God I locked in the profits. And today was exactly one of those days, right? I'm thanking myself. It went from 1970 where I locked in all the way down to 1780, but it was at $21 earlier in the day. So you could argue, yeah, you left some money on the table, but guys, you can't time everything perfectly. And overall, I ended up playing some calls today. If you guys were in the Discord chat, which is linked down below, and again, it's free of charge to join, I actually played some September 18th, 2020, $21 call options. And these are about, I think, 16 days out. And I bought them at, at $1.40 and I sold them at $1.80. I mean, I called the, the entry and the exit out in the Discord. Um, again, if you guys want to join that. And this move was unbelievable for me. I'm not the biggest options trader out there. I mean, you guys know that at this point I dabble. I understand options. Obviously, I trade them. But I'm not like some of these other guys that all they do is trade options. So for me, a dollar forty premium I paid and I sold at a dollar eighty. That is a massive gain. I mean, I think it was around twenty-five to thirty percent. So I'm very happy with that. Um, you know. Day traded those uh, workhorse calls, and I also ended up trading and selling out of FL Foot Locker. I locked in a pretty solid profit here on Foot Locker, and now that I'm looking at it, crap, I sold it early, and, and, and it's okay, guys, because profit is profit, and you never went broke locking profit, right? But I actually sold out at 31.45 earlier in the day. It was around, again, around a 6% profit. I'm not sure if I just mentioned that, but I actually ended up getting in Foot Locker at $29.62. So I'm happy with it. I think at this point, we're breaking out of $30. That's a very good sign. Now, I just want to see if it cools off around 31, 32. Maybe we consolidate a bit. The RSI comes down to a healthier spot, and then I could re-enter. I can always re-enter, and, and guys, if you're trading, I'll always understand if you have a profit on the board, you're a bit iffy, lock the profit, then you could re-enter. So that's what I'm doing right now, looking to re-enter here on Foot Locker. I'm still in up, uh, not Upwork, Apple, AAPL, and Apple took a beating today, down about 2%. It hit 138. I should have locked in, but we don't we don't play the shoulda, uh, coulda, woulda game on this channel, guys. But that would have been a good exit point, but I didn't exit. And it sold off from 138 down to about 127. I held. I did not let my my hands get shaken out. You guys have heard the, uh, you know, when, when the market goes down, quote unquote, it shakes weak hands. That's kind of what we saw here with Apple today. I didn't, I didn't get shaken out. I held on. I stuck to my guns and it ultimately recovered. And I think this is a good sign heading into tomorrow, heading into the rest of the week that Apple is going to try and test the mid 130s again, which is what I'm hopeful for. And that's where I'm looking to maybe lock in some profit. We'll see. But I'm in Apple still. I sold out of Upwork as well, UPWK. But um, I actually sold out yesterday. Half of my position ended up selling out another half, which equals the entire position, guys, for those of you can, uh, that can do math. Um, but... Yeah, I sold out of Upwork at $14 or $15.42 and I got in at $14.40 a couple of weeks ago at this point. So ended up liquidating that entire position, did very well there and I'm still in my gold holdings, GDX as well as GLD. I'm going to hold those for a longer period of time, guys. Honestly, I'm not looking to get rid of these anytime soon because they are hedge overall here and I kind of want a hedge to the, uh, to the stock market, to the, to the dollar and so forth to the economy and that is what gold provides for me so overall that's it I liquidated a lot today um, I locked in some profits moving forward um, and I'm going to be a bit more cautious moving forward guys because again the markets are getting frothy in my opinion we're in need of a pull down which also really goes in line with me locking in profits right being a bit uh, uh, safe a bit more conservative here because like I said earlier you can always buy back in. It's not like once you sell, you're restricted from buying back in. So that is overall what I did. I'd love to know down below in the comments what you guys did as always. Now let's talk about some breakout stocks here, five in particular. And if you guys stick till the end of the video, we'll go over some bonus ones as well that I'm looking at. So INTC 
It's finally happening, guys. Intel is breaking up. We're seeing a leg up today, up 3%, almost up $1.46. And you guys can see we broke out of the 180 SMA here on the four-hour chart, which is a, a level that I've been looking at on this stock, right? We've been covering it. It's been consolidating at around 43, 45 here for the past month at this point. And we've been really waiting for the breakout of 50 and that 180 SMA. So now that we got both of those, I'm looking to get into Intel, but I'm not looking to jump the, uh, the gun quite yet, quite honestly. Uh, I'd like to see it consolidate, settle at 52 a little bit. And then maybe I'll enter, but overall, this is a very good sign, and I might even pick up some calls. Honestly, I haven't looked deep into the options chain, but I might pick up some if they have any at $55 strike, $57.50, maybe for a month, two months out. We'll see what those are looking like, but I'm liking Intel for a play, either for call options or just straight up shares. I'm very interested in this one as it is breaking out here, and another one that we called out, guys, and you guys know if you track my channel religiously, we called this one out, Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO, and we talked about how under 50, it's a bit sketchy, it's a bit sketchy under $50 because it's gotten rejected there multiple times since the beginning of April, right, once, twice, three, four times, so we said here on the channel, wait for the break above 50, that's going to bring a lot of momentum in, a lot of bulls in, and it'll really solidify and confirm the trend, which is what I wanted, which is what I was waiting for, since I, I, I'm i not looking, again, to, to rush anything, so we got the break above 50, we closed at 51, this is exactly what I wanted, so I'm not in Coca-Cola quite yet, but if we find any consolidation around 50, 51, 50, 50 tomorrow. I'm jumping in, no doubt about it, as I do think there is potential up to the mid 50s. Heck, maybe back up to $60, guys. I don't know if we'll get back up to 60. That is a stretch here. That is a big move of around 20% for a company like Coke. That doesn't happen too quickly, right? So you might have to wait a bit longer, but I think from 50 to 53, 55, hey, that could be a move that that happens here in the short term. So I'm watching that for sure. And uh, yeah, you know, these first two guys, Intel and Coca-Cola, they're boring companies, I'll be honest. Coca-Cola more boring than Intel, but you can't deny that there's money to be made here. There's money to be made here, which is why I am watching them. And uh, yeah, the next one is going to be Disney. Disney is breaking out it's been breaking out here ever since the beginning of August. They got earnings that were pretty decent. They, 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 they uh, what really moved the stock, in my opinion, was hundred mil. Was it? Yeah, hundred million plus subscribers on Disney Plus. That shot the stock from one seventeen up to one thirty. I was very happy about that as somebody that's been buying Disney pretty much this whole time since March. Not, not. Uh, big chunks, but periodically, right? I've been averaging in in my long-term accounts, and you guys know that if you track my M1 Finance portfolio, which is linked down below, by the way, if you guys do want to check that out. And I believe M1 Finance is running a, a promotion right now where if you guys actually use my link and deposit any amount, you get $20 for free. And that's more of a long-term brokerage. It's not for day trading, swing trading, just, uh, just to let you guys know that. So that's linked down below. And anyways... Disney is looking to break back into this channel. Remember, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, and it hasn't happened yet, but we've been getting rejected at this at the uh, the channel. It's almost like, you know, Disney is not being let back in. You guys can, t can tell exactly what I'm talking about, right? So I'm thinking if Disney could break 140, that could be that that could be what it takes to to get us back to 149 that could be the break where a, an explosion comes and especially if volume kicks in with that i think disney has a lot of potential from here and probably not as much as potential as let's say Coca-Cola or Intel, but either way, I'm loving it. Another one here is Pepsi, and now that I'm, uh, I'm filming this video, guys, all of these stocks we're talking about so far, they're all blue chip, quote unquote, boring type stocks, but again, don't discriminate. Don't always go for the high-flying growth stocks, the the Shills, the Neo, the Tesla. Sure, there's a lot of money there. There's a lot of money there, but don't forget about these value plays that 
are starting to break out now. These value plays, there's money to be made as well, even though the the spotlight's really on growth at this point. That's kind of what I'm uh, trying to open your your mind to and your eyes to, right? Pepsi here, up 3% today, up over $4, breaking out of a resistance that's been a pretty big resistance ever since the beginning, uh, middle of April. You know, Pepsi and Coca-Cola, they're pretty much going hand-in-hand here. The trend is very similar. You can see Coca-Cola has been struggling ever since April. Now it's finally breaking out. Pepsi, same thing. So I'm loving it. I think Pepsi, any sign of weakness here, I think it's it's a buy, quite honestly. But like I always say, do your own due diligence, guys, and your own research. But I think anything at 142, maybe 140 even, I'm pulling the trigger on Pepsi. And I already own Pepsi in my M1 Finance account as well and in some other long-term portfolios as I think the company is very, very strong and is doing very well um, at this point in time. And another one here, which I mentioned earlier, it is one of those spotlight stocks. It's Tesla. And I think it's worth taking a look at because it went down 5% today. And it actually more like 6%. And we're finally seeing some weakness in the stock. It ran up to $540, which was ridiculous. If we take a look at what that would be pre-split, that would be around, what, like a $2,600, $2,650 stock price, which is unbelievable. So it went from a $2,650 stock price, $530 post-split, down to about $450 right now, which is around eh, a little bit under... Uh, kind of like 2300 So it went from 2650 to about 2300 So yeah, it is a bit frothy, but you guys have to look at it and trade it based off the technicals, right? I'm not looking at Tesla right now, and I'm buying it here just because of fundamentals. Yeah, I love the fundamentals. Do not get me wrong. I love the fundamentals, but I'm looking at a buy here more as a technical play, right? That's kind of more what I'm looking at. And I think this weakness, I mean, it's worth watching and taking seriously because we t- we saw Tesla go from 350 post split price down to about uh 270 a couple weeks ago we called that out and we we actually maximized not maximized our profit but we 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 really got a, a massive gain on this we did very well I, I i i was buying tesla at 1400 i sold a little bit i think at like 1800 or whatever and you know we're seeing another big pull down now which is similar to that and who's to say that um we don't bounce back. It's very possible. But another thing that's possible is Tesla maybe sells off even further or even for a couple of days. You know, we might see a, an extended sell off into next week on the news that they're selling $5 billion of stock to kind of keep cash on the balance sheet, reinvest here and there, which I think is great. But on this news, the the stock might deflate a bit. So anything at 400 450 I'm interested in. And now that we're talking about Tesla, I didn't even write in my notes I forgot. I'm still in Tesla. I bought Tesla yesterday at about 478, um, and I'm still holding. It's it's a very small position, guys. By the way, and I'm looking to add more to it. So I have my money where my mouth is. I'm buying Tesla here. I actually have it already. Again, like I said, I'm down a decent amount of my shares, but I plan on averaging in a little bit more, bringing that cost down, and just holding at this point. That's kind of what I'm looking to do. I think this is a very strong technical play here off this 50 SMA on the four hour chart. So let me know your thoughts there on these stocks. Now let's talk about some bonus ones very quickly, starting with BJ's ticker symbol BJ. And you guys can see this one is down a bit off its highs. I believe they had a decent earnings report. It's down about four, four dollars and 10 cents off its highs, which equates to around, let's take a look at this. um, I'd say about a 5% opening. Wow. Wow. Wow, I'm wrong. More like 8%. So an 8% profit window open there on BJ's on a decent earnings report on this pull down. So take a look at this stock on the 180 SMA on the four hour chart, this gold line here. This could end up being where it bounces. Another one is Ulta. I know I talk about Ulta a lot, but I do because it is is showing potential up 2% today, up almost $5 per share. And it's, it's looking like it's reversing. I mean, it's taking a, a it's really looking like it's one shot away from 250. It's tuning up for that cut pattern. So watch Ulta from 230, 250, maybe back up to 270. And two more here. NVIDIA, guys, 
up another 4%. Unbelievable. Just like I said yesterday, I mean, any pull down I'm looking at, at NVIDIA, I'm considering it as a buy. But the thing is, we're never pulling down. It's it's very, very small pull downs here, and I never pull the trigger, and it keeps going higher. So if we get a substantial pull down, maybe a, a 10%, whatever, I might consider NVIDIA. And Starbucks here is another big money maker for me that I've been calling out that I love here. And we called this move out yesterday, if you guys remember. We talked about how Starbucks was showing a nice base at about 85 bucks. We consolidated yesterday, rallied out to about 86, closed there. We gapped up this morning. So we rallied all the way up to almost 90. We called that out yesterday. And at this point, I'll be honest, Starbucks needs to cool off, no doubt about it. RSI overbought, we need to pull down to 85, maybe 86. If it shows a bit of support there, a couple consolidation days, I'm looking at it for an entry point. So overall, guys, that is it for this video. If you guys found value, I'm sure you did, hit that like button for me. Consider subscribing to the channel and check out all the free links down below. Don't forget to do that, our Discord chat, our Facebook group, and you can get one free stock from Webull. That is valued up to $1,600 by simply depositing $100 using that link down below in the description box. And by the way, that is an affiliate uh, affiliate link, guys. I also get a free stock, but I do appreciate you all if you do use that as it does help me directly in all the free content that I'm putting up here on YouTube. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, stay safe out there. Keep crushing the markets. Peace out.